Hi guys, hope you're doing well. Um, as the title of this video suggests, I have found quite extensive, in my eyes, rust on my engine casings on my T120. I need to show it to you, which I will in a minute. Hopefully you guys will give me some ideas on how to treat it. I know I can replace the whole engine casing, but yeah, I don't can't quite believe I've missed it. I'm really fussy and about my bikes and do try and keep them nice but I don't know how I've missed this because I think maybe engine casing is black I don't know anyway I need your help before I show you that I need to talk about oh first of all mention my friend Rob who I've been friends with since I was 14 or 15 and he got diagnosed at the end of last year with quite an aggressive cancer and um, has been having treatment and um, I spoke to him the other night and I said, is there anything I can do? I, I, what can you do? But I mean, you just just feel so helpless, don't you? And he said, you already are doing it. He said, I've been watching your videos um, when I've been having treatment. He said, and I've actually been laughing out loud. He said, I've been watching them over and over and they still make me laugh the third and fourth time over. <laughs> he said, and he's heard them all before anyway. Obviously he's heard all the stories. So he said, carry on with them. So I'm going to, for Rob. Um, so mate, I'm thinking of you. This one's for you. Love you lots. And I hope you you will remember this story. But uh, you guys who haven't, hopefully will find it quite amusing. It was about a skiing holiday that me and my friend went on when I was about 21. And <clears throat> on the last night um, of the holiday, the organisers in the hotel um, said that we were having a midnight toboggan race from the top of the mountain or halfway up the mountain down to the hotel and you get up to the top of the mountain and they give you drinks and then you toboggan down what could go wrong <laughs> and um, so we thought yeah we're up for that so we got to the top of this this mountain and they gave us bottles and bottles of ouzo I don't know if any of you have drunk ouzo before and this is one of the reasons I gave up drinking actually honestly because I got so drunk on that stuff and even today if I smell aniseed, it makes me gag. <laughs> it was awful. And we, me and my friend were absolutely wasted. I mean, honestly, could barely speak. Um, but we decided in our drunk fuel brains that we would go last in the toboggan race and then overtake everyone on the windy path, the icy windy path down to the hotel and come out victors and look the heroes. So that was our drunk fuel plan so uh, we took it really seriously like the bobsleigh team and off we went everyone else had already gone went down this icy path both both of us jumped on we all shared toboggans so it was two two per toboggan and we jumped on and we were hacking it and i mean hacking it down this this very steep icy path and didn't really think about having to turn or steer i don't think even we knew how to actually anyway we came to the first sharp corner and of course we just went <laughs> sorry we went straight over off this cliff i mean cliff it was about 20 foot drop literally landed it was very thick snow so we weren't well i say we weren't hurt we landed in this thick snow absolutely in hysterics we we stood up and my friend realized that he'd twisted his ankle or he thought he'd twisted his ankle it actually turned out he'd broken his ankle so he stood there laughing for about five minutes, thinking it was hilarious, and then realized that actually we couldn't, I mean, he was hobbling about, so he couldn't get anywhere, but I couldn't get up this icy cliff. There was no way, it was about 20 foot high, there was absolutely no way we could get out. And we were literally in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it, there was nothing around it except for snow. We couldn't see any lights, nothing. So we sat there and we were, I mean, we started to get cold quite quickly. And within about 15 minutes, we were freezing and we'd sobered up so quickly. And we started writing. <laughs> Sorry. We started writing messages in the snow to our loved ones. <laughs> to our loved ones. <laughs> we thought we weren't going to make it. And then my friend was starting to get very gloomy about the situation. And obviously his ankle was really hurting. And he said to me, look. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, he said, I'm not going to make it through the night. <laughs> he said, if I go before you, you have to eat me. <laughs> I said, what? 
He said, you got to eat me and stay alive. <laughs> stay alive. So I was looking at him thinking, well, you're not going anywhere, mate. But we sat there in another five minutes of silence. And obviously my head was going round about what he said. And after about five minutes, I said to him, have you got a knife? <laughs> <laughs> and he looked really scared. And I said, I'm not thinking about using it now. But if the worst does happen, how am I going to cut you up to eat you? <laughs> to eat you? He said, I haven't got a knife. I said, I haven't got a knife. He said, you just have to take... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you'll have to take bites out of me. Oh, God. Anyway, we were sitting there and we were quite a little bit worried, to be honest with you, because there was no one else around and it was very, very cold. And then all of a sudden, my friend said to me, do you know what? I watched a survival program on TV and I remember them saying that if you take all your clothes off, and then hug the person you're with. The natural body warmth keeps you alive. <laughs> yeah. So I said, okay, I said, I don't really want to strip completely naked. Uh, let's take our tops off and then we can hug each other bare chested. <laughs> oh, so we did that. I oh, know, don't judge me. It was life or death. Um, so we took our tops off, took our jumpers off, took our jackets off. <laughs> Hugged each other with our jackets over the top, bare chested, face to face. <laughs> and after a couple of minutes, I said, look, I think I'd rather die of cold. <laughs> I don't want to be found in the morning, <laughs> naked and hugging someone. <laughs> Anyway, it was literally five minutes after that we heard voices and saw lights and they, they'd found us, the rescue party, they'd sent out a rescue party and um, they, they brought up a sledge which had a, a like um, a stretcher on it and he was, but my friend was put on the stretcher, it turned out he'd broken his ankle and uh, we were saved. But that was our story of um, our near-death experience in Austria, in the Austrian mountains. <laughs> so... <laughs> I couldn't have eaten him. Anyway, let's look at my bike. And guys, it's not a good sight, I've got to be honest with you, but um, let me spin the camera around. So guys, it's my beautiful bike. And I was just cleaning it the other day and I thought I thought it was like a watermark, but I'm gonna to have to put the torch on to show you. Or maybe you can see it. I don't think you can. It's like bubbling underneath the surface. Can you see all there? All up there. If you put your finger on it, it's you can feel it crackling. So, I realise I can buy a new one of these. <clears throat> but, could I repair that? I don't know guys, what do you think? I did put AS, ACF 50 on it, but obviously, I don't know if I put it this high up. I don't know guys, tell me what you think. Yeah, not good. Anyway guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, um, and I will catch you on the next one. Ride safe guys.